Uh, okay, um, so my, my boss has just told me that I'm doing my job wrong. Um, um, no, so you had just brought up a very good point, which is that, uh, so normally what we, we would do is we would do a QA, and a um, you know, upstairs on the, on the third and half floor. Um, but because we do have a bit of time, um, you know, until the next break, what we could also do is that we could invite, um, you know, the speakers up here on the stage and do a little sort of like a panel type Q&A. So if anybody has any uh, questions about as an employer, as an employee, a potential employee, um, you know, about relocating, about, you know, how to get a job, about working in Finland, uh, please do um, maybe come here in the front and we'll hand you a microphone. Um, you can ask a question. And then if you don't have questions, um, feel free to go and, uh, and, and grab um, coffee already. Uh, how about this? All right, let's give one more applause to all of our uh, speakers for the morning session. Um, so yeah, if, if you do have questions, um, you know, please do come here in the front and Juho will uh, hand you a microphone. Uh, well, e e either way, um, you know, put your hand up if you have, uh, have a question. Oh, <laughs> this, is, this is true. But these are not Finnish people. Uh, these, uh, oh, yes. Um, well, do I have any questions? I, I, you know, so, you know, these talks, I, I think, you know, you all played the, you know, like fairly, you, you told the line about like not playing too much of stereotypes and not, you know, sort of like saying, you know, things about Finland is like this, Finland is like that. Um, but, you know, having, having, you know, worked with many people who come here, you know, like sometimes they are a little bit surprised about the Finnish working culture, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Saku, you mentioned this idea of like being transparent about what you know and what you don't know and that br bruntness and that transparency uh, and all of that. So could you, could I maybe ask each of you, uh, you know, from the point of view of a Finnish person or somebody who was migrated here is like, what are some of the like really key sort of like things that, you know, you imagine people might find very surprising about the Finnish workplace? Um, and whoever wants to start, I'm happy to hand the microphone over. Yes. Maybe a quick one. So I think uh, for me, when I moved to Finland and started working, because in Denmark I was not working in a big corporate, but in Finland when I moved and I started at Relex, uh, I felt that it's, as Saku mentioned, it's, it's a very open and transparent environment. There's no hierarchy here. My boss did not know anything what I was doing. I was given a responsibility to handle recruitment for a few businesses. She never asked me how I'm doing, but she was always asking me, do you need my help? I, do you have a good amount of work? Are you overloaded loaded with work? Please share. So that was the only thing when we used to discuss in our one-on-ones. And it was more focusing on my well-being and the quality of work and what I would like to do. So I think for me coming from, uh, an experience from India, it was pretty shocking because uh, in India there's hierarchy, there's a lot of mac micromanagement and I was pretty happy and I'm, I'm very happy with this kind of work environment where I'm doing good work, I'm doing meaningful work, I'm improving myself, I'm developing my skills. So that's what was I found a little different. Um, it's a good question. Um, some people that I've spoken with um, have talked about kind of like the, um, the sort of um, the other side um, of this Finland experience and, and, and this sort of a lack of hierarchy and, uh, and this trusting culture kind of like at the workplace and, and etc. Which is if you're not entirely sure of everything, you know, um, you might not be sort of walked through all these different elements and, and then sort of discussed about the, you know, the sort of, um, you know, uh, the range of responsibility or the expectations and etc. I think you've had a great experience and, you know, there's, there's a lot of discussion between the, um, the manager and, uh, and the specialist and etc. You know, then it works out well. But if, you know, there's this sort of a little bit of an unlucky scenario that the manager might be super busy or with many responsibilities and such you know I've, I've had quite a few discussions that you know there can be then the feeling of oh I am let a little bit alone and uh, and be ex expected to deliver and, uh, and and then you know one just has to raise the hand hey I need a bit of help and all the rest of it uh, so so there are sort of these cultural nuances that can be most of the time the positives but, you know, I think there's always also the flip side to the coin. 
Yeah, I, I can maybe personally add to that because I'm somebody who, you know, started my career here in Finland and then I, I have been working, you know, in Finland for 10 years and abroad 10 years. And I think the difference is that here in Finland, uh, your managers and your co-workers truly care about you, but it's a quiet sort of caring where like it is, you know, you have to have the agency and the uh, initiative to actually, you know, like open up these conversations and put your hand up and say, I'm, you know, I need help, or I'm, I'm struggling. Whereas like my experience working internationally in British and American companies is that they do, you know, ask you how you are, but they don't really want to hear the answer. Um, so, you know, I personally prefer the way that we do it here, but you know, that's of course, um, you know, might be a little bit of a culture shock. I think there's one more thing which I forgot to add was the culture of asking questions, which was not the case in India where I worked uh, uh, it, it is like you have to find your way and find a solution, but here you can ask questions if you are in doubt rather than just waiting for the end and then then the time is gone and then you are coming. So they appreciate if you ask questions at the beginning and they would not mind saying if you're asking silly questions also. Yeah, that's another thing I forgot to mention. Yeah, I would have said exactly the same thing about the, um, but I will just speak a bit more about that because um, I've done cultural training for quite a while <laughs> and what often uh, brings a lot of anxiety to people who move to Finland in the Finnish working culture is exactly this is that I don't know if I'm going to succeed I don't know if I'm doing well because nobody's saying anything <laughs> uh, but I would think in another way you are doing really well because no one is saying anything and, uh, but that's the way it is, because at the same time as in working life, we are often in many cultures, like I hope I would have more agency. I would hope that I would have the decision-making power. Here you have it, uh, because you're expected to have it. But if you are used to something that somebody is, will give, is going to give you the final word, the final say what is the best, but you are the one who is determining the best. And it, it's actually quite difficult. <laughs> so, but it is about the same thing that uh, people might feel alone uh, and it, it might cause anxiety if you don't, uh, if you are used to different uh, cultural or like a working life. So I think it's very important to understand that quiet means yeah, you are doing really well. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and certainly the Finnish way is not the right way. So like when you do go to a workplace, I think you will also positively influence the culture by bringing the way that you, you do things. So hopefully we do have more open, loud, caring, uh, you know, because we, we, we build more diverse workplaces. Um, does anybody have any questions they would like to ask? Oh, there's a, a question uh, over there. Oh. Thank you so much. Um, my question would be, are there any new developments you're seeing on the horizon for the uh, smoothness of moving within Europe, with the different social systems and security? And especially regarding now, we have a lot of people who work remote here in the room. Me is one example. How would it go? I live most of my time, like more than half a year in Finland, um, but I'm employed at a university in Austria. And, but I do the work remotely mostly. I only go for workshops and so on. So how could it work out with Finnish and European? Um, as you mentioned, taxation and security, health systems and so on. <laughs> I think it was an uh, excellent question. Uh, I hope everything is taken care of. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, this is a perfect example when doing remote work. Who has the right to tax? Um, within the EU, it's normally where you reside, where you live and work is where the country of taxation. Uh, social security, it kind of is likewise. <laughs> it, it's in the same place if you are majority of your time in, in one country. If you travel back and forth, it's still the country where you have your permanent residency in. Um, but, uh, Obviously, I don't know how many days you are in Finland and how many days you are in Austria. But within EU, it's like where your permanent ties are, like where your family lives, where, you're, where you have an apartment. That is normally the place where you should be taxed and where your social security is. And that country gives you a um, document that will prove to other countries where those things are located. Or which country is responsible of those, let's say it that way.
All right. Um, do we have any more questions? Oh, there's one. Um, and there's two. Hi. So my question is, if uh, we're talking about the best case scenario and, you know, optimistic scenarios, but what if we turn it around? What if uh, I'm a anxious, depressive person by nature, and I'm thinking, what is the worst case scenario and how to, you know, mitigate those risks? I come here, I find a job, I move here, but then everything goes wrong. I don't like it, I, I don't know, some kind of issues. And then I'm stranded alone in a different country with no job, no nothing, and what then? <laughs> Sounds like you've been here very long. <laughs> it's a good question. What if everything hits the fan? Um, you know, you, you arrive to the country, uh, you, you've, you've had a job, for example, but then something goes wrong and all the rest of it. Um, I've spoken to, uh, you know, two thoughts come to mind, at least uh, at this point. Uh, I've spoken to a number of, um, you know, developers recently, you know, who've been uh, back to their or original country because of that sort of a setup. For example, you know, the first winter perhaps for their family was impossible. You know, they hadn't prepared mentally for what it's going to be like in Finland, you know, in, in, in winter time. You know, it's going to be dark, it's going to be, you know, uh, cold and all the rest of it. And if you're, you know, one was used to very, you know, hot temperatures and all the rest of it, you know, it was just something that, you know, the family couldn't cope with, you know. So, so you know, it's all about doing the homework. Um, then when it comes to sort of um, um, the sort of the job side of things, um, I think it's key to be active, to be networking, you know, using all the different tools. So, so it, if it's a case of then needing a new job, I think that can be sorted out as long as one is, you know, positive and, 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 and communicating to others. Uh, the worse things go, personally, it can be the more difficult to remain positive, but you know, there needs to be the, whatever the personal tricks there are then to sort of try to, you know, look at the bright side and, uh, and honestly networking, using all the different tools, uh, you know, for networking, link, LinkedIn, Slack groups and etc. to communicate, talk about new jobs, to land a new opportunity. So it's not about being out of job and all the rest of it, uh, you know, then of course, there's all the benefits and all the rest of it to talk about. But I think the key is that, you know, one's well-being is, at least in my belief, you know, firmly founded upon, you know, having, recent, you know, uh, important stuff to work on during the daytime. So I think, you know, that's how I would approach two, two, two um, elements in my mind. What about the others? Yeah, well, I think I will take uh, also two things. One is that um, networks are the main thing. When you arrive, start building them because you need a social safety net. Uh, even though if it doesn't come naturally um, to some of us. <laughs> uh, it's, but try to find people who will support you when the things are difficult. Um, keep contact to your friends and family abroad as well. I think that's also important. But then there is the, like a systemic side. If you have landed a job here and you will be unemployed at some point, uh, the system will catch you in, in those cases. Um, with this group of people, I think it works just fine. So you will not be uh, left on the street and uh, completely out of money. We have a good social security system, like said, you have been employed here, so you will have a financial source uh, because of that. And um, so, but it's, it's not obviously, that is the basic things that you will need, 
but I would still think that having people around you that can help you during the difficult times, because we all have difficult times, <laughs> that to reach out to other people, to start building those networks immediately, because when times are tough, you will need them, and it's good to have the people around also when the times are good. <laughs> so, so those would be my two advices, but I wouldn't be too worried about the system because that will carry you financially, so that you will get by um, and you will have a roof over your head. Just a small thing on network, I'm not going to repeat because Saku and Tanya has already covered, <clears throat> but uh, when I moved here, I was of the uh, thought that I will build, maintain and sustain my network because you never know. As you mentioned, it could be uncertain, we are outsiders and it might happen that we occur at or come at a situation where we lose a job or, or the situation is bad in a company. So don't think of just building network for finding a job, but then maintain and sustain that network. That is really going to help you. It's a small country. Each person knows each other person and you have such communities where you'll meet that network and build that network. Maybe we can take this one final question and then find some really dark, dark, dark Finnish coffee. Yes, exactly. Uh, so one more question. And I, I will just say the last one. Uh, you know, if you are a person who's prone to depression uh, and you move here, get one of those high lumen uh, sunlight lamps. They really work for a seasonally affective disorder. And also the nature is close by here. So, you know, like that is also well known to have an antidepressive effect. Uh, speaking as a serial depressive myself. Okay, thank you. Uh, my question was already partly answered by Saku, but what are the most common things that uh, foreigners moving to Finland complain about apart from taxation and win winter? Yeah. Uh, apart from taxation and winter? Yeah. Yes, so what, what else do uh, people complain about? Um, when, I, when I stop to think about this, kind of like um, I, I think about the discussions that I had uh, over the past uh, half a year or so, and uh, and you know there's two topics. Typically, you know, it's not like people like to complain, but you know, if there's you know this realistic discussion going on and all the rest of, it, um, you know, it's it's you know there the, the, there is the darkness, you know, there's the coldness a little bit, but a lot, you know, some people really like it. So so it's not like you know it's that simple, but then. Another element, the taxation part is something that uh, um, I think the individuals that come arrive to Finland by themselves, not having a family, they see that they contribute a lot to the Finnish system in terms of taxation and pension money and all the rest of it. But without a family, they don't get much back. So when it comes to this taxation logic, I think I've, I've discussed with a lot of people who have family over here, and they see that's a very positive thing. You know, so so not everyone is is you know per se, you know, complaining about the taxes when you see that hey, you know, the daycare and the school and etc. They're next to free or free uh, in in total, uh, but uh, but you know the individuals who have the opportunity to move around to to move to another country they are in a position whereby they're thinking, hey, you know, the, the salary could be higher somewhere and, um, you know, um, the taxes might be lower. So it's kind of like this math making uh, scenario for them. And, um, but still, you know, Finland's a good place and all the rest of it, not to, not to sound too critical here for, for the single people. <laughs> What people have shared with me, uh, people have relocated to my company is the healthcare system. It's pretty complex. They feel it a little different than their home countries. And the other thing is, where do they network? What kind of communities and where they find the right network to pass on their time? Because there's work-life balance. There's a lot of work after work, but then they don't know whom to meet, how to start from scratch and, and these stuff. That's all, what I've heard from people. Um, I would say that people complain about uh, that services are scattered, like uh, information is hard to find. Uh, partly it's a language thing, uh, but we may need to understand at the same point that that is kind of Finnish is the language of this country. <laughs> so uh, that has been the starting point. Uh, but for example, finding any information, I don't mean authorities information, I mean like finding that hobby you like. Um, 
but we must understand at the same point is at the same time that uh, many of the work done like for example for hobbies or services are done by voluntary pay basis we live in the promised land of voluntary work and like uh, if it's your kid's hobby like playing football it's the dad who is coaching the team and they don't necessarily have the time to uh, go to the web page and translate it into English because many of the things you see are done by volunteering. So uh, it's not out of spite that this is not on three languages or more. It is, but this is what people say is it's hard to find. And this is what we are trying to solve that we would have uh, information on everything on, on several languages and, and uh, but we are not there yet but this is obviously really frustrating learning a language takes time for each one of us so so it's it's challenging if you don't find the information so it can be frustrating but at the same time again try to find at least a tiny network that would include a Finnish person who can help you navigate to that football team or playing ice hockey or getting to cross-country skiing because if you don't find the information online I'm sure they're willing to help you out and once you get there you get to this cross-country skiing practice uh, which will be good fun everybody will help you out but if it's not it's not in the online world which can get really frustrating but try to find the people <laughs> All right, thank you. Let's finish on a really uh, positive note on a lightning round. Very quick answer. What is your favorite place or thing in Helsinki people can visit this weekend if they're staying for the, for the weekend? Just one place that you love about Helsinki. If you have one, feel, feel, please feel. In Helsinki, ideally, yes. I would have suggested Porvo. <laughs> okay, you can also call Porvo. It's a, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful city about 70 kilometers out. You can take a bus there. Um, it's gorgeous. Uh, so you can go to Porvo. Yeah, Nuxio is something I could suggest, yes. but the weather, I don't know if... Yeah, yeah the Nuxio forest. Also, you forest. can take a bus there. It's uh, about, what, one hour bus? And they have everything. You can swim in a lake, you can hike in the woods. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, I really like the walk from Kaupatori to Eira, Eira Ranta. You know, nice view, you know, of, over Suomelin and all the rest of it. Uh, so definitely recommended. Yes, and then when you have done the walk on the southern tip, there is a really beautiful sauna, like a very tourist-friendly sauna. You can wear a swimwear so you don't need to be naked. Um, and it's gorgeous, and I, I recommend it. Yeah, I would um, say that go to Suomenlinna, one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, just outside uh, Helsinki. You take a little ferry ride, you can get to enjoy the living by the seaside, and there are nice coffee shops, restaurants, just walk around if you don't feel like having more coffee after the conference. Uh, so, but enjoy, enjoy the fact that we are by the, by the sea, and, and you, so you can take these little boats to the islands close by, because they're still open. Uh, most, most of them, but Suomenlinna uh, Fortress, that would be the best tip. All right, um, thank you very much. We'll be back here in 20 minutes for web components, so thank you for staying extra long. If you do want to um, have any private conversation and ask for advice, we will be on the floor three and a half um, for the next, let's say, five to ten minutes, so please come and, and speak uh, to our speakers. Thank you very much.